Hey, how you doing? This is B. Sue. I'm back. And I just wanted to say, we hit a milestone today with a new website. We hit order 500. So a lot of you have been coming to see me. Thank you for that. Thank you very much. We appreciate your support of our videos and of our website, too. That is how we make our living. But really, you know, let's not talk about this. This is about your pleasure, your fun, your learning. And I've got somebody here today that's going to help you with that in a big, big way. First of all, I'm going to give you a hint who it is. This is her sidekick. Do you recognize Parker? That means Katie Oskin is here. And we're doing polymer clay today. Oops, Parker, sorry about that. So I'm going to get out of here and come on in, Katie. There she is. Hi, Brenda. Here. Hi, guys. And she's got so many special things to tell you, so I'm going to shut up, get on out of here, and let her tell you about it. And there's Parker, because he's in charge. <laughs> Hi, guys. Uh, we're going to do a special project today for fall. Uh, we're going to make a necklace that is similar to mine. Uh, Brenda has uh, graciously allowed me to share with you some tutorials. Uh, I did write tutorials to supplement today's version, one of which... Uh, you should already have or will have already seen in a previous video when we made these flower uh, pods. So you can get that. It's still on my website and you can watch the video that has already been done on how to do that. So we're just going to mention it real quick right here at the beginning so we don't spend a lot of time at, at it later. But I am ready if you guys are ready. So let's get your clay and some fall colors and let's get started. Okay, so we're going to make something today, at least the parts, that look similar to this necklace. Again, this is a flower pod uh, that we made in a previous Bisu video, so uh, go to her YouTube, where you are now, and search through her history and you will find this as one of her videos. Some of the component pieces that you'll need to make uh, this specific necklace from Bisu are these nice little tulip caps, and their number on her website is B R O X O. 8938 and they come in all different finishes. This one is brass ox. And then these nice little leaf dangles which you can see on several different places of the necklace. You can also get those from her. The code is LF07162. And then the last thing that we will be using is an acorn cap. And these acorn caps are black. Uh, the number is CAP09058. So those are some of the brass components that we used uh, for this necklace. <clears throat> and let's get started on the clay portion, shall we? Okay, so to begin, uh, what you're going to need to do is grab some colors of clay that are on the same side, neighbors on the color wheel. So I have a little color wheel to show you here. In this color wheel, this is a full color wheel, in order to make a blend that matches, that doesn't turn brown in the center, you have to use colors that are neighbors to each other. If you put orange and blue together, you will get mud. So make sure when you choose the colors for your blend, they are on one side of the color wheel, okay? So the colors that we are going to use today are metallic mauve, pomegranate, copper, raw sienna, orange, and cadmium yellow. Now all I've done to get these is take a block and slice a portion off. Now you'll notice not all the slices are equal in size because I wanted to choose colors that would stand out the most. So I wanted my blend to have a very strong orange look to it. So the orange is much bigger than the yellow. So what we're going to do is first we're going to begin by conditioning our clay. Now and because we're using so many colors, the easiest thing for us to do so we don't cross contaminate our colors is you're going to start to condition your colors by hand from the lightest color to the darkest. So we're going to start with the yellow and I'm just going to ball it up real fast and start begin to condition it. Conditioning your clay is just a way of aligning all the particles so that your clay gets nice and soft and malleable and joins all those polymers back together. That's why it's called polymer clay. So I'm just really just squishing it here in between my fingers to get it nice and soft. Then you're going to take your lump of clay and place it in the center of your hand and you're with the other hand on top and you're going to roll it like you used to do when you were a kid making Play-Doh. We're just going to make a ball, okay? 
So then you'll have a ball. We're going to take that ball, and it doesn't have to be a perfect ball. Obviously, mine's a little lopsided. Now we're going to turn that into a teardrop. We're going to do a modified Skinner blend. Uh, this is the super quick way of doing it because we're not using large portions of clay. This is the easiest way to do it. Take your hands, make a V, and roll back and forth this way. What that's going to do is give you a teardrop shape, just like that. Now we're going to lay that down. Now remember I had said that we're going to work from lightest color to our darkest color. The next lightest color is this metallic mop. So we're going to do the same thing. We're just very quickly going to condition it. And this is the old Primo metallic mop. I guess I should have specified that. This is all uh, Primo clay. This color of metallic mauve is not made anymore. It is much brighter than this. So if you want to use another color, maybe blush. If you want to add pink, you can. We're going to do the same thing. Roll it into a ball and into a teardrop. And when you get really good at this, you'll be able to do it all at one time, all in one movement. Okay. And now we're going to keep going, working again from the lightest color to the darkest. And you'll see I got brown on here because I had it sitting next to the brown for a while. That's okay. We're going to make a Skinner blend, so I'm just going to fold it into the middle. It's not going to hurt anything in this case. If you were sculpting with it or making a cane, you would want to cut that off. And again, we're just using our hands. And you'll notice my teardrops are different sizes. We're going to change that at the very end. So don't worry if they're all different sizes. They will be because if you did not cut your clay to the same thickness with each slice, you're going to have different shaped teardrops. So we're just going to keep working, conditioning this clay, making it nice and soft. It doesn't have to be fully conditioned because since we're making a Skinner blend out of it, when we put it into the, into the pasta machine, it will condition itself as it rolls through. So again, we're just making everything into a ball and then into a teardrop shape. Okay, this is the copper, and you, if you see, it's got a nice metallic sheen. I only chose two metallics, this mauve metallic and the copper. If you choose all metallics to do this with, uh, they will blend into each other, and you won't be able to see the color variation as well. So make sure you use maybe only two metallics at most to do this project. So just continue to condition your clay, roll all your balls, and teardrops and lay them down next to each other. Now this is pomegranate. Pomegranate is a very, very strong red color. This will taint your hands red, even with just a little bit of conditioning. Always save pomegranate for last. The same with Alizarian Crimson if you choose to use that in your blend instead. Because there's nothing you can do, you will get red fingers, you will get red hands, and there's just no going back. So if you don't like your fingers and your hands to get tinted, put some gloves on, put lotion on first. You can always clean up your hands with good old soap and water, add a spoonful of salt to it, rub them together under water, and voila, color is gone. Okay, so now we have all these little teardrops. Now you'll notice they're all a little different size and shape. We're going to take and make them all approximately the same. They need to be going one point down, one point up, down, up, down, up. If they're not, it's going to ruin the blend. The purpose of doing this the abbreviated way um, is because number one, we're using a very small amount of clay. Number two, it's going to make a faux triangle shape that will allow the blend to increase. So the worst triangle or teardrop we have is this yellow. So I'm just going to make it a little bit longer and you'll see how it picked up the red from that pomegranate because I didn't wipe off my hands. So if you're concerned about that, make sure you wash your hands before you do what I just did. Okay, now we have all these triangles or teardrops. Now what we're going to do is kind of press them all together, start to flatten them a little. You can't put these in your pasta machine just the way they are. So take your finger, flatten them all down. This will also help to start joining them together. And then once you get them flattened, take an acrylic rod and roll it back and forth. Press pretty hard because you want to get this about the thickness of the largest setting on your pasta machine. So you're going to have to press pretty hard. Get it nice and thin. It's going to naturally spread and you'll kind of see how that teardrop shape is starting. Okay. All right, now let's go to the pasta machine and let's finish this blend. Okay, here's our pasta machine and it is all ready to go. It is on the largest setting. I'm going to change it to the second to largest setting 
Um, only because I like, that's my preference, you can use it on the largest if you want. You're going to put your blend in the pasta machine with your colors going up and down. Do not put your blend in this way. Put your blend in with the colors going up and down. Take it and put it through your pasta machine. This is going to start your blending process. Now, in order to do a Skinner blend, you want to fold your blend in half so that yellow touches yellow and pink touches pink. Again, always keep your fold down. This will help prevent air bubbles from coming through your blend and continue to pass this through your pasta machine about 20 times and it will create for you a very nice blend. So just keep doing this over and over and over until your colors start to blend. Okay, so this is what our blend looked like when you last saw it. After about 30 passes or so, it looks like this. And you can see all the colors are now bl nicely blended into each other. I chose to add brown in my blend because I wanted this to have a very earthy and fall look. And brown adds a little bit of that balance that otherwise may have been missing. So now that we have our blend, if you choose to make a pod flower, like the tutorial that we did before for B. Sue's, you're going to take this blend and you're going to cut it in half. Run half through the pasta machine at about a thickness too smaller than your smallest setting and then make your flower pot. So we'll set half of this aside. Now how are we going to use this other half? First thing that we are going to do is we're going to cut off one strip along the bottom. I'm going to cut off, I call it the wonky end. Okay. This is a zero scrap project, so when you are done with this project, there will be no scrap left over and you'll have everything you need to make at least one necklace. If you want to make more a necklace and a bracelet, you'll need to increase the amount of clay that you use from the beginning. We're going to set this aside for later. Now for right now, what we're going to do, if you remember the necklace uh, from the very beginning, one of the features that it had was leaves. So I have several different ways we're going to show you how to make leaves. This is called an embossing cutter. This one is by Lisa Pavelka. And what it does is when it impresses into the clay, when you push down on the plunger, it's going to imprint a leaf design all along your leaves. This is a very easy and effective way to get a leaf. Um, some people don't like the uh, cartoony look of it. I don't mind it, but neither does Parker either because, you know, that's his thing. Um, but if you don't like it, there are ways to alter it by flattening the edges. So we're going to use one of those. Now what I want to stress to you is when you cut your shapes, do not place them side by side next to each other, okay? What you actually want to do is you want to take your cutter. I'm going to put it at an angle, and the reason I'm going to do that is because I'm going to get a nice variation in my leaf. It's not going to be all yellow with just a corner orange. It's going to have some substance. So to use Lisa Pavelka's cutters, you're going to push down all the way through your blend. Then you're going to take your thumb, and I continue to hold on to the base of it so it doesn't pop up. Take your thumb and push down on the plunger in several areas and angles. I just push down on the center and then like I'm doing, push down kind of on each of the four planes, okay? You can do it a lot. It's not going to hurt anything. It's going to give a nice deep embossed look. You're going to pull it out, take off any of the excess that you have. Now what's going to happen is you'll say, well, how do I get that off? Well, it's really not all that hard. Just push your plunger down. You'll hear it pop and peel your leaf off. Now your peeled leaf that you just have has some beautiful veining in it. It's got an automatic blend and it's not the blend is not in a straight line. You've got two different colors going right through your leaf and it gives a nice natural look the way a leaf might naturally occur in nature. Now there's a couple things you can do before you make this into a bead. If you want, you can gently squeeze the edges just between your thumb and your forefinger. What that's going to do is make them thinner. Remember, the th it, even if something is thin on the edges and not thin in the middle, it automatically to your eye will look thin. And because it's got this nice cookie cutter shape, it's not going to distort the pattern. Okay, so now we have it a little thinner. You can tell it's a little thinner. It hasn't changed a whole lot. 
Now to add some depth if you want, you can uh, take a little bit of glitter, uh, put dip your finger in the glitter jar, then have a separate piece of paper, tap it off, and just kind of gently press. My tip to you is if you're going to use glitter, after you press it on the clay, take a clean finger without glitter, rub it over the top, and burnish it into the clay. What that will do is allow all those glitter particles to lie flat and actually to be reflective. So often people just put it on, they don't burnish the top of it, and then they flake off. They don't, they're not reflective. It just looks like dirt on your clay. So you don't want to do that. You can also add mica powders or anything you want. Before you bake it, take a needle tool, and this is just a homemade needle tool, and add a hole for a jump ring or split ring or whatever you're going to use on here. Now, here's my other trick to you. Before you bake it, you've spent all this time now making this nice blend and making this beautiful leaf that looks very fake and cookie cutter-ish. So take your leaf and twist it. Mm. Add a nice little twist. Now when it hangs off a piece of jewelry, it will have movement and it will look like something natural. Now if you're left-handed or right-handed, your leaves will start to twist the same direction, so just turn it upside down and then twist it. That way they go all different ways. And then just take it, and I think we talked about this last time, in your little jar of cornstarch, or whatever you have, a baking sheet, I prefer cornstarch, and just set it right in there. Okay, the cornstarch will help so that when it bakes it doesn't flatten out, it'll still have some of that beautiful shape. Okay, and when you're done, you can always do the antiquing effect to put some of those veins back in there. Kate, Parker, mm -hmm. Parker wants to be on camera too. Oh, he does, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Brenda. Okay, now we had just talked about how to do this. Now remember that I said when you cut out your leaves, you do not want to go in a straight line across because then you're going to get lines. You want to vary the way you use your cookie cutters. This is a nice little cookie cutter and it's got some different shapes. So I'm actually going to put it right here next to the old leaf, okay? And it's in here, the coloring's now going to go a different way, but it's going to grab a lot of color with it. And I'm going to just push it down and remove it. This cutter is big enough I can stick my finger through. Now what I like to do is I like to take my fingers after I've cut it out and kind of press on the edges to get rid of that cookie cutter effect. Now, this is going to be a hand done leaf. So like we have done in the past, what you're going to do is you're going to place it in the palm of your hand and you're going to use a needle tool to draw, literally draw veining on your leaf. So I'm going to start in the center and you don't want it to be straight so I kind of curved my line here. Um, when I'm in my own studio I have a thicker needle tool. The thicker needle tool that you use the faster the veining will go. But just make some veining off of here. Okay the idea is to give the look of the leaf not to be a leaf. Even if you just left this at that, most people would say, oh, that's a leaf. Okay, now you could have started it at the other end, okay, um, to make this the base. It's whatever your preference is. Um, I chose to do it this way. Now the other thing that I'm going to do is place it back down. I'm going to kind of smoosh it gently back onto my table. And I'm going to use this tool from Sculpey. It's the medium ball tool, but the back end has a nice flat little ridge. And I'm going to take it and I'm just going to press it right in between where I put all those lines on my leaf. And what that's going to do is give a natural ridge texture to my leaf so that when I bend and turn it, it's still going to look like a leaf. Okay? And you can add a few more, and if you want, Christy Friesen has an excellent tool for this. I just forgot it at home. Um, but you can use, you might have it? I might have it. Which one is it? It's the one with the double arc. It has an indent on it. I don't know which what the actual that, name of it is. I call it my leaf tool. No, it's not the new one. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's your That's tools. Well, you can use this one, actually. This is a great tool to use. It's got a little knife thing on the end. Stuff in and you can just uh, go in this way. And this will make a much sharper indent and more of a cut as opposed to this that makes a dent. Then when you're done, Let's clean this up a little. Make sure that before you bake your items that your edges are the way you want them. It'll reduce your sanding work later. And again, the same as before. Oops, we didn't put our hole in it. Let's put our hole in it so that we can hang it from something later. Again, just use your needle tool, kind of wiggle it around and open up an opening for it. Okay? 
Again, take your leaf. And again, my hands only work one way, so if I twist it, it's gonna go the same direction as the leaf we just did. So I'm actually gonna turn it over. Now I'm gonna twist it because now it's actually gonna be twisting the opposite direction, okay? Oops. And if I would stop dropping, <laughs> there's your nice little leaf and you can kind of tweak it and you know, you can be a little rough with it. Okay, so there's our second leaf. Now the third kind of leaf that I'm going to show you how to make is just using one of these. This is a Kemper cutter, a 3 4 inch oval Kemper cutter. Uh, these are great for smaller leaves. So I'm going to go ahead and cut one of these out and just use the plunger to pop it out. Now, I have this tool from Viva Decor. This is called a patchy mold. Okay, uh, this is one of the things you can get to add like an instant veining texture. This is not my preferred method, but this is another option to you to make leaves for your necklace. Again, I would not suggest making all of your leaves different unless you're going to have a ton of leaves. Choose one method and make all your leaves for one necklace one way. But we're going to take this, I'm going to kind of press it down in here a little bit first. And then we just close it up and then squeeze, 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 squeeze. Just keep squeezing on it. The more you squeeze it, the more texture and veining is actually going to get on your leaf, okay? You do not need to use cornstarch or anything. These don't stick uh, like some other molds uh, actually stick. You're gonna open it up, okay? And look, it comes right out. Now look at what that tiny little round, whoops, what happened to that leaf? Okay, it does look like a leaf. It looks like a squashed leaf again. Uh, it has beautiful texture to it, a very natural and a nice organic look to the leaf. So again, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna put it right back down on our work table, use our needle tool and make a hole. So, so far now we have three different kinds of leaves. We have the Lisa Pavelka kind of instant embossed cutter leaf, okay? We have the leaf that we handmade just from a shaped cutter, and we have this one that we cut first and then pressed in the Viva Decor mold. So what you're gonna do is continue cutting out all of your leaves in whatever style or place you wish. I always go with the big cutters first, if that's what I'm using, if I have multiple size ovals and things that I'm using. Okay, and then go in with my little cutter afterwards because my little, little cutter can get in some of those places that the big cutter can't. And like this one, I want to show you, see how I cut off the back? That's okay, I will show you how to make it look like a bug or something else kind of ate it in a minute. <laughs> uh, which has also a nice natural effect, especially if you're going for a real organic look. Okay, now this scrap, I don't want you to worry about it, I'm going to show you what we're going to do with it next, okay? So let's take and let's finish these leaves and let's do all these leaves a little different. So this one we'll do in our hand, which is different than what we did with the Viva Decor one. And I'm just adding simple veining and right on the back of my hand. And this time I'm going to kind of try to indent. No, nope, it's not going to work. Your hand is not as sticky as you want it to be, <laughs> believe it or not. But go ahead and add your little ridge lines. Again, that just gives an extra nice little bit of look. Oh, don't forget, I keep forgetting, don't forget your bead hole. You can use a straw or something else to make these or quilting needles which is what I generally use. Leave a beautiful hole uh, for beading and give it a little twist and drop it back in your clay. Now this is the one that I had said that will make it look like a bug ate it. So what I'm actually going to do to make it look like a bug ate it is I'm going to do all the veining first. Then we'll work on destroying the part that already looks like it's been chopped off. So I'm going to make this one curve a little because the bug ate it, right? Maybe we should make a bug with our scraps. Hmm. Put the bug on the necklace. Bug jewelry is good. Bug jewelry is good. Bug jewelry is fun. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take Christy's tool. This is from Christy Friesen and you can get it in her online store. And this is the Can't Live Without It tool, the C-L-W-I. Okay, now we're adding these little veining things in here. Now, in order to get this to look like a bug ate it, you're going to need something super sharp 
and you're going to need something very fine. So we're going to use Christie's tool for this. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the tool and drag it down these edges. And I'm just going to keep dragging and keep playing because what it's going to look like is like, gee, something started to eat me. Then we're going to take our needle tool and we're just going to rip some of it away. And what it's going to end up looking like is, well, gee, I got eaten. And it's a nice quick way to add a little bit of life. And we're kind of tearing all that away to leave behind a really, really, really rough pattern. Again, your scraps, we're going to use those later, so I'll put it back on our sheet. Then when you lift it up, kind of take your finger and press on that destroyed part. And it's just going to have a little bit of ugly to it, mm -hmm. which is going to look, you know, buggish. Buggish. There's a new word for you, Brenda. Again, add your hole. Then again, take and shape your clay and put it in your cornstarch jar. And we're just going to keep doing this. Apparently, when I cut out my Lisa Pavelka flower, I forgot to embose it. So we'll just fit it right back on top. This is not a big deal. I do this all the time because I just don't think. And I'm going to rock my finger back and forth. Use the palm of your hand if you're stronger there. Now, because I didn't fit it well the first time, I actually have to take my thumb around the outside mm -hmm. to get all the extra clay off. You don't have to, but you'll just have to deal with it later. So you might as well do it now while it's easy. Then push your plunger. It pops right off. Yep, it'll pop right off. Now you can put a little bit of cornstarch in here to make it easier for you. This uh, metallic clay tends to be very soft, so it's sticking a little bit more uh, than the first leaf we did because metallic nice. clay is so soft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are these are nice molds or cutters, if you will. Um, I really do like them. All right, so then we'll just add our hole. Then I'm going to go ahead and pinch the edges. That'll also help take away some of that pressed, I just came out of a cookie cutter. Look. Turn it. Oh look, we turned that one the opposite way. That's awesome. Yep. And then as they bake, uh, they can continue. And we have one more leaf. And you're just gonna, I think you guys get the drift by now. You're just mm -hmm. gonna take and, you're, we're just making leaves here. We're having fun. They do not need to be perfect. Remember everything in nature, God made it and none of it has a perfect look to it. Uh, that's why it's so hard to imitate real life because it's not perfect in us and our humanity. We like to make things perfect. No blemish, no mistake, no bug holes like our other leaf. Okay, I'm just gonna do the same thing. Now again, you can add glitter to these. You can add uh, mica powders to them when they're done and baked. You can antique them. You can add some paint on here. You can do whatever you want. This is just the base for your project. Okay, now I had said at the beginning that this was a zero scrap project, and here's where the fun part comes. Now you're gonna take all these little scrap parts, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of roll it up onto itself, and it's gonna twist, and it's gonna do all kinds of funky things, and that's okay. You don't really care, and that's not really the point of what we're doing. So I'm gonna take it, and we're gonna kind of squeeze it back together, okay? Now, if you wanted to make more leaves, when you get to this point, what you could actually do is roll this back through the pasta machine several times. It'll create a new Skinner blend from your scraps using the same colors, just a variation of it. There might not be as much brown or pink or something might be missing because of the way you cut it, but you can do that. I'm gonna make one of my favorite beads, uh, which is a super, super easy bead to make. Um, but it is one of my favorites, so all we have to do once we rolled out our, we have to roll out our clay and try not, this brown is cracking. The reason that this keeps happening is because at this point this has sat long enough, uh, the clay is not conditioned like it was. So it's going to keep cracking, so just keep your eye on it, try to condition it as much as possible uh, while you're rolling it. Spend some extra time just holding it, you know, holding your finger over it without moving it because your body heat will naturally warm up the clay. What I'm doing is I'm making an incredibly long snake that there's no way possible Javi will ever get it all on the camera. Sorry, Javi. 
and I'm making my ends very thin and my middle nice and thick because what we're going to do is make these giant big fun beads. I love that. Yeah. I've these... been making those a long time. That's the only thing I really make halfway decent. <laughs> <laughs> well, these are a lot of fun and even from this basic like bead yours. you can add texture, yeah. you can add all kinds of stuff. I make these beads only when there's a difference in thickness, so it's thicker in the middle and thin on the ends because I like the way that it looks as opposed to it being all the same thickness. It looks too extruder-ish for me. Mm. But uh, the way I do it is I pick it up and kind of let the, end, the ends dangle toward the bottom a little bit and try to find the middle. So the middle is about here on this blend. Then I take it in my fingers where the middle is and I wrap it around my finger a little. Mm. That's going to start your curl. And then I'm just going to take it and finish it, maintaining that same hole in the center okay that's so that's so what we did easier. and I just did it by kind of setting my finger in there mm -hmm. some people wrap it around a rod or do all kinds I think this is easy yeah it is. Um, it's not that hard then I just because I'm right-handed <laughs> it looks funny if I wrap it with my left I take again my right hand turn it over take my right hand and wrap it now I made this off okay. yeah and Fit that back together and it's still a little wonky if from right here you decide you know what that is the ugliest bead I have ever made no big deal we'll just squish it up because it's still in its same skin or blend variation you can do this as many times as you want there is going to be some air in here so be patient because remember you had air in the beginning uh, when you created the spiral so just be patient keep keep at the middle and by this point now all my air is out of the middle so I can just keep rolling and rolling and rolling now the other thing you can do with all of these scraps let's pretend that we had kept that bead look there it is isn't that a gorgeous bead that one turned out perfect the other thing you can do is to take this nice blend make it as even of a snake as you can Okay, so you want it to be about the same thickness the whole way. And if you get it a little thinner, like this end is, don't worry about it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take it and we're going to cut it into sections. And they do not all have to be the same. I would stress to you not to make them the same. And I'll tell you why in a minute. Because if you're making a necklace, you don't want all your beads to be the same. I mean, you, you just don't. There's no variation. Um, so take your little bits, roll them in a ball. I just use my finger and the palm of my hand. Make a nice little ball. I'm going to take it and set it down. And I'm just going to use my needle tool. Again, if I had a quilting needle, this would be much better. Now what I want to do is create flat beads because I want to put some rondelles or flat component parts. So when I do it, I pierce it down on the table. The second time I pierce it through, it's going through the same hole. But if I put it down on the table, pierce it and pull it out, it's going to make that other side flat as well. So let me get it back here on the needle hobby and you can see better perhaps. That what it actually did was make a flat and then I pinch around the edges and then what that gives me is a flat top. This is not a round bead now. It's more like a faux square almost because you're pinching the top. Okay, And then just put that in there in your little batch of stuff and we're gonna keep doing this some of my other beads that I love to make are squares I like square beads press it with your fingers down on the table to get your first started and then use your fingers and make literally a square and you're just gonna keep turning it and flattening it with between your thumb and your index finger it's gonna make it flat and then look at that nice cute little square bead and it really didn't take all that amount of work uh, that much work when you pierce it then pierce it straight down from top to bottom look over the top it's easiest because it's square it will keep its nice square shape when you pierce it it's not going to get all bent out of shape okay so there's some square beads but you have all of these pieces left you're just going to continue to make beads literally until there's no scrap left and then by the time you're done you'll have a pendant Maybe some of these pretty beads if you decide to make them. You can use the extra from this blend. All of these you're going to make beads out of everything. And then by the time you're done, you'll have enough beads that you can put together 
a pretty snazzy fall necklace. Now, one of the other things that I did want to say is that one of the things that we got here from Bisu Boutiques is an acorn cap. And they look like this. So in order to make uh, the acorn, I like to choose one of these that has, see how this one is red and it's brown? I like to choose one that has variation to it because I think it adds something to the acorn. But you're going to shape it into a ball first. Again, I use my hand and my finger because it's small. And then this is going to be the base for our acorn. Then you just kind of pinch it between your fingers. Now this is too small for Bisu's cap. We would have had to put several together. And then place the cap directly on top. And voila, you have a okay. acorn like that. Okay, so there are lots of things that you can do, but there should be no scrap left when you are done. When you are done with this project, if there is scrap sitting on your table, make a beat. Because there's nothing else that you cannot duplicate this blend exactly anymore. Mm -hmm. It can be a variation, but it will never be exactly the same. So use all the material you have and use it to your advantage to do some work. And then I have uh, some more tips for you and this fall festival jewelry uh, supplement that you can get a little additional bonus things uh, remember that when you bake your pieces your component parts uh, bake it longer than what you think is necessary everything in my studio from beads this size leaves this size this nothing in my studio bakes shorter than 45 minutes I would put this in my home oven for an hour so make sure that you are baking things long enough. The longer duration at the appropriate temperature at 275 for Primo will give you a stronger piece. And since you're making jewelry, it's going to knock around. It's going to bump into things, might get stuck on buttons or zipped into a zipper on a coat. You want it to be durable. Make sure you're baking it long enough. I know these are less than a quarter inch thick, so the package says bake it for 15 minutes. I'm telling you different. <laughs> so be sure you're baking it long enough and it'll be durable. The same thing. Yeah. Go the longer, the more durable. Yep, yep, that's exactly right. Not necessarily hotter. Hotter will tend to burn. Right. But the longer uh, it's baked, the stronger it becomes. Mm -hmm. So so enjoy your project. And Bisu, I now turn it back over well, to you. Well, I think we have to apply for Katie. Beautiful job. And everybody, go get your client and get clean because this is awesome. And then, too, when you mention on Bohemian Vibe, which is our clay group on Facebook, Chrissy's supposed to pop in with her own project this month. So we're waiting to see what that's going to be. So come and join us at Bohemian Vibe and the Bisa Boutique's creative group. And uh, have a wonderful, clayful day. See you later, guys.